Here is a red ink by Scribo Chianti. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. I have been finding that the wine reds, I tend to enjoy the color a bit better than standard reds. And this is one of those wine reds as a Chianti. Now there is a little bit of tone variation by Nib as it makes gradual steps darker. When it does shade, it stands out nicely, but it just seems to not shade a ton. Yet, red frequently doesn't shade a bunch, so there's no real loss in it not being a big shader here. The pen for today is a Lamy All-Star. All of the writing samples are done with a Retro 51 P51 with an extra fine nib, a Retro 51 Corsair with a medium nib, a Retro 51 Lincoln with a 1.1 stub. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the extra fine nib, this is the lightest tone that we're going to get, and it is still very easy to be able to read. There's no feathering and there is no spread. There is some shading going on. You see it at the end of movement on the first line where the E and the T are a bit darker. Same with forest underneath it where it starts darker or starts lighter, works its way darker to the T. Everlasting, last word on the first line, where the first E is a little bit darker. It lightens up through most of the verlast, but the ting at the end does darken up a bit. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We do get some very nice shading. Look at that second line. Times for long while. Times starts lighter, becomes much darker at the end of the word at the S. Four, the F is lighter at the top and at the beginning of the stroke, but darkens up at the bottom. The O lightens just a little bit, and the R lightens a little bit more, where long works from lighter to darker through the L and the G, while starts much lighter on the W, gets much darker on the hiles at the end. Looking at the stub nib, it is just a little bit darker than it was with the medium. There is no feathering. There is no spread. There is some shading going on. It's about the same type of shading that we had with the medium, though not as frequently. Take a look at make on the first line where it's a mid-tone on the M, lightens up at the A, very dark at the KE at the end. Does the same, or starts lighter on that third line where the T is lighter and the hat at the end gets much darker. Now, it's shading as drastically different as it did with the medium, just not as frequently. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. This is how the Pilot Custom 823 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here is the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There were approximately 9 milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is just a little bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We do get a little bit of shading, not a ton. I do think the shading shows a little bit nicer than it did on the Claire Fontaine. Taking a look at dark on the second line, where the loop of the D is lighter than the up and down stroke, but it lightens up at the AR and gets much darker at the K. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine, just a little bit. It is darker than it was with the, or on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering. We get no spread. We get almost nothing for shading. It's only in a couple of spots where it's more noticeable, like flapping and hand on the first line. The flapping, the F is a bit darker than the LA and the P's darken up. It's the second P that it lightens up through the rest of the word. 
where hand is mostly light and it's only the up and down stroke of the D that do get darker. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, same tone as the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread. I think the shading we're getting here is better than we saw with the other nibs on this paper. That on the second line starts lighter, gets darker on the H, lighter on the A, darker on the T, where they stays very dark the whole way through, but could starts lighter works its way darker the l is just a little bit darker than the letters around it now the d starts lighter gets very dark at the up and down stroke looking at the back of the page we get no bleeding and no ghosting there's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies the one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds the one on the right marked with a d is let dry for 10 minutes before putting it into water The next writing sample is done on a national brand Steno notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is quite a bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we get a little bit of shading. I mean, you see it some in Haddled on the first line where, or Huddled on the first line, where the H is darker than the U. The beginning of that first D is lighter. It does darken just a little bit. The second D to the LE is quite a bit darker. It's during the last D that it lightens up. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as it was with the extra fine, darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We do get some feathering. You see it in sometimes on the first line where the cross of the T or red on the second line where you really see it with the E and the D. There's no spread. There is a little bit of shading sometimes, again, on the first line where it starts lighter. It becomes darker at the times but the shading here is less noticeable because of the tone of the paper. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, just a little bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering. We get no spread. We do get a little bit of shading from time to time, like out again on the first line, where out starts lighter, becomes darker at the T. Again, has a lighter A, darker G, lighter AIN at the end. Looking at the back of the page, we do see that there is some minor ghosting. I'm not sure if that would stop you from writing on the back of the page. It would depend on the mood I'm in that day. Now, nothing bled through touching the page underneath. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left. Pen flush is on the top right. One third bleach solution is on the bottom left. And water is on the bottom right. The next writing sample is done in a Rhodia notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is just a little bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread. We do get a little bit of shading looking at that he liked on the second line where the T of that is a little bit lighter than the H, the AT lighten up a little bit. He, the H is just a little bit lighter than the E and liked the L is a mid-tone where the I lightens up just a bit, but the KED at the end, Definitely a little bit darker than it was with the eye. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. It was not like there's no shading at all. If you look at it was not on the third line, 
it starts as a mid-tone, gets very dark at the T, and the W of was starts a little bit darker than it ends. It stays lighter through the word until the downstroke of that S at the end. Not starts light and gets dark at the T. Looking at the stub nib, it is just a little bit darker than it was with the medium, just a tad bit darker than it was on the Clairefontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We do get bits of shading that are certainly showing through. Look at butt on the first line, not my butt, but on the first line, one T, not two. The top of the B is darker than the rest of the B. Now U transitions from a mid-tone to darker and the T is very dark. Where it, almost underneath it, the top of the I is darker than the rest of the I. It does lighten just a hair on its way into the T that is much darker. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Califolio Icarlet. Here is Delta Red. Here is Diamine Firestorm Red. Here is KWZ Red Number One. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is just a tad bit darker than it was on the Clairefontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we get nothing for shading. We do get a very nice tone on this paper that I do think would work out very well for a student wanting to use this instead of a standard red. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, just a tad bit lighter, the slightest bit lighter in a majority of the writing than it was on the Clairefontaine. Now we get no feathering and we get no spread. We get almost nothing for shading. There is spots like dark, the very first word on the first line, that the D and the K are darker than the R in the middle. Big on the second line starts lighter and does get darker at the G, but a majority of what we're seeing is really without shading. Looking at the stub nib, it is darker than it was with the medium, a little bit darker than it was on the Clairefontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We do get shading better than it has with the other nibs on this paper. Look at huge on the first line where the HU is darker than the G, which is n quite a bit lighter gets dark again at the E, bats. The B is a nice mid-tone where the A lightens up. The T, very dark, and the S, light again, where black does very much the same thing. The B is darker than the LAC, which is only a little bit lighter, but the K is much darker than the rest of the word. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. While it's nice to see inks in the same color family, I prefer to find an ink that complements this color on the page. Here is a blue black ink by Lamy Blue Black. Here is a gray ink by Karen Dash Infinite Gray. Here is a blue ink by Noodler's Texas Blue Bonnet. Here is a black ink by Visconti Black. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is just a hair darker than it was on the Clairefontaine. There is no feathering, there is no spread, there is no shading, all of that almost is a lie because there is feathering and there is spread, but the feathering and the spread 
are for it being copy paper, not the end of the world. Look at Hobbit, tiny little feathers all over it. Much more noticeable with the to the left of that. Now, the only thing that was true in that whole first part is there's no shading. And what we're getting here is a very interesting red that I could see someone choosing to use on this paper. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, the same tone as the Clairefontaine. We do get feathering. Look at their first word. Provisions, second word, both on the first line. We do get a little bit of spread. Now, the feathering could at times be a little bit of a pain. In there on the first line, it's kind of distracting, and it's only distracting a little bit at the beginning of provisions, and that's because I am I typically use some better paper. As far as shading, I'm going to say it does not shade, even though the very first word there and that P of provision are a little bit darker than the rest of the writing, but all the rest of the writing really does appear to be the same tone. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, just a little bit lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine. We do get feathering and we do get spread. I think the feathering is a little less than we had in the medium, so it's a little nicer in performance here. The shading, there's none. We get a very interesting tone on the page that is definitely not like any kind of red that you would get from a ballpoint. Looking at the back of the page, we have a ton of ghosting. You could not write back here, but none of it bled through touching the page underneath. So what nib and pen do I recommend using for this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. The extra fine is the lightest tone and a distinctive red on the page with very little shading. Now the medium is just a tiny bit darker and does show the shading much better. The stub is again, just a tiny bit darker than it was with the medium and the shading holds up about as well as it did from the medium, maybe a tiny bit less. So. I prefer the medium flow medium nib for its great tone and shading on the paper. It only slightly beat out the other nibs as it has that just something unknown better about it in this case. I hope you got something out of this video and thanks for watching.